Kit cars can be a great way to get exotic styling without paying a fortune for the latest Lamborghini. But sometimes these fiberglass rebody builds can be, well, plain awful. Whether the design is a grotesque caricature of a well-known supercar or a unique design styled to look like a mutilated Batmobile, these cars just don't have it. So in today's video, we'll be taking a look at the top five worst kit car designs of all time. The first and perhaps most bizarre car on our list is the now defunct Kamala Futuro. This British kit car manufacturer was founded in 2001 and sold a unique lineup of open wheel Ford based kits until they ultimately went out of business in 2008. Taking a look at the cars they sold, it's really no surprise the company didn't make it, as these are some of the most hideous creations I've ever seen. Kamala Cars bought the design for their first model from another obscure company known as Dax Motors. They rebranded it as the Kamala RT and managed to sell around 16 of them. The front end takes inspiration from a Formula One car, but is bloated and swollen, whereas the back of the car is more reserved with its out of place square taillights and faux exhaust indentations. Kamala's second model, the Futuro, was somehow even worse. It came with a quad headlight setup and even more grotesque body lines, taking away the snazzy open wheel architecture that was the RT's only redeeming quality. The cars were built on a custom made space frame with an aluminum floor pan and a 350 horsepower Cosworth engine. The company sold it for around 30,000 pounds and claimed it could go from zero to 60 in under four seconds when finished, but it certainly wouldn't look good while doing it. Although not a lot of information exists on these cars, it's rumored that only one or two Futuro kits were ever made. And I think we should all be grateful this kit car is so rare, since I'd hate to come across one in real life. My eyes have bled enough for today. Next on our list is this gaudy Lamborghini Murcielaga replica. It's called the Zorba G40, and seeing it from the back, it almost looks credible. It features the same blocky taillights, aggressive vents, and sharp mid-engine design as the supercar it copies. But move along to the front of the car and the illusion fails. It has an over-exaggerated look to it, with too many intakes that leave nowhere and cheap plastic headlights. It looks just like the name sounds, kind of alien. The interior is even worse, with its formless center console and panels that just don't quite fit together. All around, the Zorba might be slick enough to fool a few of the non-car fans out there, but any enthusiast brave enough to venture within 40 feet of this thing will immediately spot the fakery. The G40 kit was sold for around $9,500 and built onto an 80s era Pontiac Fiero donor vehicle. This V6 powered sports coupe was known for catching fire and struggled to reach 100 miles per hour, meaning it's definitely no Lamborghini. Adding the inefficient fiberglass Zorba body on top definitely doesn't help, especially considering it required the chassis to be cut, stretched, and welded back up in order to fit properly. Installation in all this was offered for an extra cost of roughly 10 grand, or you could slap it together yourself in an estimated 18 to 22 full work weeks. The entire cost of assembly was considered to be around $30,000, which honestly isn't that bad for a custom car. But the complexity of assembly, poor performance of the Fiero donor, and the not so convincing final look makes this one of the poorest kit car offerings in recent history. What could possibly be worse than an obnoxious Lamborghini ripoff? Well, how about an ugly Porsche ripoff? The Laser 917 from Elite Enterprises was designed to look like the famous Porsche 917 Le Mans race car. Sadly, this cheap fiberglass replica doesn't even come close to the real thing. The Laser kit is based on a Volkswagen Beetle donor vehicle. The bug lent not only its chassis, but also its underpowered four-cylinder engine to many 917 builds, although some owners did choose to swap it out for a more powerful Porsche motor. The design, well, it was loony at best. The short Beetle floor pan really didn't convert that well to the long, low lines of the 917, which led to some of the most confusing design proportions I've ever seen. The rear overhang just sweeps up far too much, while the front end is short and stubby with its foggy headlight covers. A rare few of these models were well built and are semi respectable, but the overwhelming majority were slapped together over the weekend by amateur builders who added ludicrous embellishments such as ratty lights, massive wings, and, well, even the odd flamethrower. The laser was sold throughout the 70s with a fair amount of success, and today you can find them for as little as $5,000 on your local Craigslist. But be warned, it won't have the same feel or look as a true 917. 
The next car on our list is in a similar vein to the Laser, with its simple retro design. The Bradley GT is perhaps one of the best known kit cars from the 70s, since roughly 6,000 are estimated to have been sold before the brand's demise in the early 1980s. The styling was extremely trendy for that era and now looks pretty outdated as a result. It came with hidden headlights, bright chrome bumper guards, and swooping body lines all around. The Gullwing doors added an exotic touch to the car, although many owners decided to forego them and leave the GT as an open T-top instead. Like the Laser 917 and, well, just about every other kit from that era, the Bradley GT is designed for installation on a Volkswagen Beetle floor pan. And you already know what that means, a weak four-cylinder motor, ultra-slow speeds, and a cramped interior. The fiberglass rebody kit from Bradley was pretty basic as well. The side profile is flat and boring, even by 1970s standards of design. These days, you can find beat up Bradley models offered for literal pennies all across the country. Supply remains high as always, but demand, well, that's understandably low. The final car on our list is a rather special one. Instead of blatantly copying another brand style, Pegasus Design went their own route with this unique March Hare kit car. Not only is it named after a children's book character, but the car itself also looks straight out of a cartoon. The brand operated out of Virginia during the late 1970s and tried to market this car as a fun, yet unironically stylish buggy. Not surprisingly, it was a complete failure. Only a handful were sold, and even fewer are rumored to exist today. The weirdly curved and bubbly front end was harshly contrasted by a wedge-shaped box hatch in the rear. It has an overall distasteful look to it, which is only interrupted by an accent piece on the roof that resembles the middle section of an articulating bus. Half the accessories are borrowed from more well-known cars like the Mustang taillights and the Chrysler fuel cap. The main feature though was the March Hare's butterfly doors. Made from a combination of flame retardant resin, fiberglass, and plexiglass, they opened up to reveal the cramped interior with vinyl bucket seats and a wooden steering wheel. And in case you haven't already guessed, this Pegasus March Hare is once again based on the Volkswagen Beetle. And while some may see it as a fun and quirky weekend driver, the fact is this Pegasus is one of the slowest and ugliest kit cars I've ever heard of. And that concludes our list of the five worst kit cars ever made. But please do remember, this video is all made in good fun. I may be cheekily insulting these cars, but I don't really mean to offend anyone or crush someone's dreams. And there's no shame in liking or owning any car you want. So please take this as a joke and keep things civil down in the comments section below. But thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Peace.